Let's begin by all joining together and praying. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, for you are our rock, you are our risen redeemer. Amen. So January 1st looks a whole lot like this. January 1st is this day when we get after it and we start getting to all these new New Year's resolutions that we've come up for ourselves and we start to work on these things because, right, New Year, New You. So, on January 1st, you wake up early and you get after it because you know if you want to have these New Year's resolutions come and actually happen and change your life, you got to put the work in. New year, new you. So on that morning, you wake up early. No more going to bed late that night either. Scrolling through social media, waiting until 2 a.m. and then going to bed. No, no, no. New year, new you. Early that morning, early to bed that night. New year, new you. You get rid of all the excuses. You get rid of all the downplaying of importance of it. You get up that morning early and you go and you work out. You set new workout goals and you push yourself to hit those new goals because you know you need it. New year, new you. That means also maybe the hardest change, the diet. New year, new you. No more eating and drinking food without thinking about it. No more binging that whole bag of chips, that box of cookies. No. Now you're going to eat no fast food, or at least less fast food. Now you're going to think about what you put in your body, the vegetables that you need to eat, because new year, new you. It means that now, again, you're going to start learning. Maybe you're going to work at that new language that you want to learn. Maybe it's the school. You're going to dedicate yourself a little bit more, a little bit better. New year, new you. January 1st looks like this, and it's a day where we get after all these resolutions because we know if we want to hit these things, if we want to make a change, if we want to be new people, you have to put the work in. You have to do it yourself. Whew. Well, I got some really good news for you this morning. As I'm saying these things, I'm not seeing a whole lot of smiles on your faces. Good news, today is not January 1st. It's April 16th. And no matter what you did this morning before this, or what you're going to do after this, you, this morning, are new. Congrats. Do you know that it didn't take getting up extra early or putting in the effort for working out or changing your diet or learning or doing anything that you have on this big list of things? No. This is the new you because you're connected to Jesus who was made new at Easter, who was raised back to life. And because of him, today you're different. You are new. You are much better than you ever would have been before. This is the new you. So for this week, and the next couple weeks after this, this is what we get to explore. We get to explore this new you, who you are, and how God has changed your life in him. I think it's fair to say that Jesus' disciples needed some new life. Because on the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked, they were afraid. They were terrified for fear of the Jewish leaders. Life had been new for them for the last couple days before this, but it was new in all the worst ways. Jesus was dead. He wasn't leading them. He wasn't guiding them. He wasn't helping them to see what was going on. No, now life was new because they were alone. 
They didn't have a backup plan of what they were supposed to be doing without him. Their mission just froze because instead of going out and telling people about him and what he had done, fear kept them there without telling anybody. And life really isn't great when it's dominated by fear in this new life that they were living. After going through this experience of watching what happened to Jesus, they needed to be made new. So it's into this room that is dominated by fear. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And then they were made new. The disciples who had been dominated by fear were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. So again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. His presence in that room, Jesus coming and being near them, made them new. Emotionally, they did a huge 180 as they focused on him alive and alive for them. Joy built up and just overflowed out of their hearts. You see, Jesus' words changed them from being a people that were dominated by fear and afraid of what might happen to a people that were filled with peace. Because Jesus alive again meant that he was who he said he was. It meant that they were finally the forgiven and perfect people that God had created them to be. Everything else was gone. All the other details in the last couple days, that was back in the past. Now their hearts were new because now they had peace with him. It was that night that they started an absolutely new life. All of those disciples, except for the one, for Thomas. Now, Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. Oh, but he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Thomas wasn't new yet. Thomas wanted more. He himself wanted the experience. He had to be part of it. Peace from just hearing about Jesus, that was too easy. No, he would have to make it happen. I think this idea of personal action, that really resonates us, resonates with us, doesn't it? I mean, you can call it whatever you want to call it. The grind, culture, really good work ethic, determination, whatever it is, a personal, all-out effort into something, that's a goal that you and I want to aim toward. Because really, that's what our American culture values. If you're blessed here in America, you probably get something like two weeks of paid vacation off of work. That's if you're blessed, but let's be honest, there's a whole lot of people that don't even get that. Do you know where that puts Americans in the world? Do you see where we are with our two weeks off of paid vacation? Just take a second, absorb what's up there. Now, I know these aren't all the countries everywhere. These are just some. This was a 2016 survey. And you see where we are? At the bottom. But here's what I want to know. As you're looking at this list of vacation days, time away from work, time just to rest and relax, how many of you in your heads are going, they're lazy, they're not doing enough, Nope, 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 nope. It's good that we're here because we work hard. This is who we are. We're all about getting stuff done. <laughs> it's 
it's pretty easy as Americans to think, yeah, look at us. Look at what we do. They need rest. They need time off. No, we are better. We're different. Our culture values the grind and the work so much that thinking about even taking that amount of time away from all of it, that feels wrong. I think this is why we connect so well with Thomas and we can see ourselves really easily in him. Because if we want peace, true peace, you got to work for it. If you want real peace and real forgiveness, there has to be this struggle behind it. I mean, otherwise, what do you do with guilt and shame? How do you feel better after messing up and doing something wrong? And because we're sinners who mess up all the time, this struggle to find peace doesn't take a break for two weeks. No, there's this constant nagging voice in the back of your head telling you to do more and do better. Because if you want to find peace in this world, it's up to you to make it happen. So we wrestle with ourselves. We struggle to make the changes, to hit the resolutions, and to do better. But all that we're left with is doubt that what God has done could ever be enough for us. Thank God we hear about Thomas. Because Thomas would get the personal experience that he wanted with Jesus. A week later, his disciples were in the house again. And Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand. Put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. And then he was made new. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. And you can see it so clearly, right? There was nothing that Thomas did to make himself new in this situation. No, it was all Jesus. It was Jesus' words telling him and everyone to be at peace. It was Jesus coming and proving that he was absolutely alive again. It was Jesus' words reminding him that there was no reason to struggle and to fight. So he makes Thomas new, and Thomas finds peace in him. This, brothers and sisters, this is why you are new this morning and every day. This is one of the reasons why Jesus' resurrection and his coming back to life matters for you because he gives you peace without the struggling, without the balancing act of good and wrong. Jesus comes to you and he speaks to you anytime you're in his word. He pushes all these doubts out of your head by telling you that he is alive again, that he is alive again for you. Your forgiveness, your peace is never going to come from doing more and doing better and hitting the resolutions and making the right changes. No, peace, real peace, comes only from him. You did nothing, and he's made you new because with his words, he gives you peace in your heart. Do you know that God's Old Testament people had a really awesome, I think, an amazing way of understanding this peace that God intended for people to have? It was this deliberate thing that every seven days they would have to rest. On the seventh day, they were going to do nothing. No work, no going around, just resting and relaxing. And you can find people in the world that still practice this, uh, so much so that even on this seventh day of the week, even when they come to an elevator, do you know what happens on that seventh day of the week for people that practice this? They can't even push the button 
because they're afraid that that might be a little bit too much work. So if you go to places where people practice this, you're going to find an elevator that stops at every single floor, up and down, all day long, because this might take away peace. Now, obviously, that's a little bit too much. That's going a little bit too far with this good thing that God intended. But isn't that really awesome? Isn't that cool to have this one day of the week that was designated as a day where you just rest, where you don't do anything, where you don't get after the resolutions, where you just take time and focus on God and what God has done for you. And when people practice this and they look forward to their Savior, Jesus, guess what? They found peace in him. But how about for you and I, for New Testament Christians, instead of going to the extreme and practicing this, how about we make every day a day of peace? A day of being made new in the peace that Jesus has given us. Now, it doesn't matter if your schedule is filled up from sunrise to sunset or if you don't really have much going on anymore. How about we just give up the struggle and live in his peace by telling ourselves that this most important thing is done. He's alive again, which means that you and I are absolutely forgiven, which means that we don't have to work ourselves into getting anything more. No, how about we make it a thought habit and we start telling ourselves again and again and again in our heads, go back to what Jesus said, I am alive, I am risen, Peace be with you. This is the kind of new life that Jesus wants his disciples to live. This is the life that he wants you to have today, even for people like you and me. This is what Jesus does. Then Jesus told him, Thomas and all the other disciples, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Life at peace. Life that is new. Life that is free and full in him. And belief in what he's already done leaves our hearts just at peace. Did you know that people can tell though? Do you know that other people can see when you haven't had the vacation time, when you haven't had the time away, when you don't take time to rest and relax? They can see it on your face. They can see it in how you communicate. They can see it in all these ways. And, and when we get there in life, hopefully there are some kind people that will come and gently say to us, you need to go and take a vacation. You need some time away. You need to rest a little bit more. People can see it. But maybe more than that, did you know that people can see the other side of it? That when you get the rest and the relaxation and the peace, do you know that people can tell? Do you know that people can see who you are when you are someone who is new and at peace? Well, people notice it. People see it. And you don't have to do a thing. So let's do it. Let's live this new life of peace that Jesus has given us. And then by doing nothing, by just living in this new peace, people are going to see him through you. This new you, this new you at peace. Amen.